are watching Faith World TV. Faith World TV, changing the world with the Word of God. God bless you and thank you for joining us again as we look into God's Word uh, together. Thank you for your prayers and support. And uh, I pray as we look into God's Word together that the Spirit of God will convict us of any ungodliness. I pray that God will challenge and motivate us to love him more with all our strength, with all our heart, with all our mind. And I pray that today through his word we'll be encouraged, you know, we'll be, we'll be blessed. We'll, we'll receive direction and guidance concerning our life, concerning his purpose for our life in Jesus' mighty name. If you join us for the first time, you will know that we've been doing a study in the book of Hebrews, but today's topic is different because um, uh, we just celebrated an anniversary. So today's topic is God, the Lord has chosen you to build his holy temple. Uh, this is a message um, that we preach now, I believe is rev relevant to every Christian and to our churches today. The Lord has chosen you to build his holy temple. Now we must establish this fact that there is turmoil and uncertainty in our world today. There's pestilence, there's violence in the home, violence in the, in, in, on the streets, the, the, the killing of millions of unborn babies every year, insecurity and injustice in many parts of the world today. There's conflicts among nations in our communities, there's famine, there's natural disasters, um, floods and fire raging in some parts of the world. Yeah, there, and also the war between Ukraine and Russia has driven up prices in almost every country of this world, leading to loss of jobs, financial difficulties among business and families, you know, in, in different parts of the world. And also there's trauma in our homes and in our lives, the anxieties, the, the fears that we face, the stress of life. Also, it's an issue that we face these days. So, the question is, why are these things happening? Well, the only place that we can get the answer is from the Word of God. It's from the one who is the manufacturer of the world. So we go to his reading instructions, which we find in the Bible. One thing God says in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9, uh, was that history merely repeats itself. It's all been done before. What has ever has happened today is happened before. In the Bible, the nation of Israel, it's an example for us of what happens to a nation when they live in obedience to God. And what happens to a nation when they live in disobedience. There was a time in Israel's life that they lived in disobedience to God and they went to turmoil. We find this experience in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 15 from verse 2. And the Bible says, um, the Spirit of the Lord was speaking to this man, this prophet. And he said, listen, all you people of Judah and Benjamin, the Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. Whenever you seek him, you will find him. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. Now, for a long time, Israel has been without the true God. That is, they were still worshipping God, but they were not worshipping the true God. They were without a true priest to teach them the laws of God. They had priests then, but they were preaching peace and prosperity. They were not pointing out the sins of the people. So problem came upon them. What are these problems? I read from verse 5 for Second Chronicles 15. It says, during those dark times of their rebellion, it was not safe to travel. Problems troubled people of every land. We see that happening today. Verse 6, nation fought against nation, city against city. For God was troubling them with every kind of problem. You see, whatever we see, see going on in our land today, it's not as a result of economic problems or uh, uh, social reasons or political reasons or, or having a, um, a, a act of parliament or, or uh, uh, bringing out a new legislation. The root of the problem is spiritual. It is sin. It is rebellion against God. And when we rebel against God, we can never have peace. Why? Because the Bible says there is no peace for the wicked. You can't 
sin against God and expect peace. But there is hope, again, from the, from the word of God. There's a way that we can return to normality. In verse 7 of 2 Chronicles, we read, But for you, be strong and courageous, for your work shall be rewarded. What work is that? The work of building the temple of the Lord. If we read First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 10, that's where the topic comes from. David was passing his instructions to Solomon. Now we should, we, we should see David as a figure of Christ and Solomon a figure of the church. So in verse 10, it says, So take this seriously. The Lord has chosen you to build a temple as a sanctuary. Be strong and do the work. That's nearly even translation. So what's the first lesson? We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, they had a building for a temple of God. But in the New Testament, we are the temple of God. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. So it's not just about, well, I'm not smoking church. You see, our body is the temple. We must not abuse our body. We must cleanse our bodies from every filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. And when we gather together, as a people will become the habitation of God through the Spirit, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22. So, the first lesson is we are the temple of God. Second lesson is that the temple is for God, not for man. It's not to honor or worship men. First Chronicles 29, verse 1, David turned to his sons and he said, My son Solomon, whom God has clearly chosen as the next king of Israel, is still young and inexperienced. The work ahead of him is enormous. For the temple he will build is not for mere mortals. It's not for man, but for God. Now, this is very, very important. Why? Because in Isaiah 42, verse 8, God says, I'll share my glory with no other. I'll read the contemporary English version. It says, my name is the Lord. I won't let idols or humans share my glory and praise. Because today we see in churches, people pray to statues of saints, of Jesus, of Mary, you know, uh, people um, worship, the praise the pastor, uh, bishop of our city, they put them on a pedestal. But we need to be careful as men and women of God that we are not receiving praise of men. We're not taking that which belongs, the glory that belongs to God. In Acts 10, 25 to 26, Peter entered into the home of a man called Cornelius. You know, and the Cornelius fell at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter pulled him up and said, stand up. I'm a human being just like you. We must not turn the church into uh, into the world, into like a celebrity culture where we follow people and domination. You know, Paul was writing to the church, the Corinthian church, and telling them that, you know, one is saying, well, I belong to, I belong to, um, I'm a follower of Apollos, I follow Peter, I follow only Christ. But Paul said, has Christ been divided into factions? Was I Paul crucified for you? Were any of you baptized in the name of Paul? Of course not. So we are not saved by man. We are not saved by, by denominations. We are saved through Christ Jesus. Amen. Not only um, is the temple uh, um, belonging to God, not only is our body belonging to God, the temple also had a plan. In First Chronicles 20, um, 8, 11, David said to his son Solomon, then David gave Solomon the plans for the temple and his surroundings. Now David, though he was brilliant, he was a prophet, he was a man of God, was a warrior, did not come up with this plan because it, it does not belong to man. It is God's building and God has the right to have his own design. And even in the beginning when the first tabernacle was raised up by Moses, God one Moses in Exodus 25 verse 40, he said, make sure God said to Moses, make sure that everything is according to the path that I've shown you on this mountain. God is very, very serious. Now, how does that apply to us? God has a plan for us to worship him in his temple. He has, he has a divine plan on how we are to conduct worship in the temple. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 3, 14 to 15. This is a letter written by Paul to his son in the Lord, his son in the faith, a young pastor. And he said, I am writing these things to you now, even though I hope to be with you soon, 
so that if I'm delayed, you will know how people must conduct themselves in the household of God. This is the church of the living God, which is the pillar and foundation of truth. See, the church is the church of the living God, and there are ways we need to conduct ourselves. And what are these ways? You see, worship of God is not about some special days like Sunday, Easter, Christmas, or it's not just about on Sunday when we come to worship. There's the music, you know, there's the singing, there's the preaching. You know, those are just the external. Those are just the icing on the cake. The main cake represents the our way of life from Monday to Sunday. You know, the Bible puts in this way in Romans 12 on how to worship God. What really honors God. In Romans 12 from verse 1 it says, And so there are brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. That is how to worship God. How much the way to worship God? See, to truly worship God is saying no to sin and yes to God. It's living obedience to God seven days of the week. That is true worship. And what is first worship? Now, verse 2 of Romans 12 says, Don't be conformed to this world. That is, don't copy the behavior and custom of this world. We should not allow the world to mold us into shape, to, to make us think and act and behave uh, according to his principles, which is inspired by the evil one. It says, but let God transform you into a new person, into a new person by changing the way you think. Let God renew your mind. You renew your mind by what? By His Word. So we need to um, find, you know, have this discipline of reading His Word to know, well, you know, how God wants us to live, how to conduct our lives, our, you know, which will influence influence our conduct, our character, and conversation. So, um, God has given us a plan, and we need to make sure. We follow that plan, not the plan of man, not my plan, not our church's plan or, or any anybody's plan, but the plan that comes from his word. Another lesson we need to learn um, from God has chosen us to build a temple is that David prepared for the temple. You know, in First Chronicles 29 verse 2, it's, David said, Using every resource at my command, I have gathered as much as I could for the building of the temple of my God. You see, remember we said David is a figure of Christ. You see, Christ as well has prepared for his temple. Through his death and resurrection, he's prepared us, you know, uh, by giving us the Holy Spirit. You know, it's, you know and, and through the Holy Spirit, we have the gifts which enable us to serve the body of Christ, to serve um, the church. In Romans 12, read that um, from verse 4 it says just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function so it is with christ's body we are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other so there's no there's no one man christian one man christian or lone ranger even lone ranger has tito you know god wants us to serve one another in verse 6 he said in his grace god has given us different gifts for doing certain things well for if God has given you the ability to prophesy, then speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If, if your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it's giving, give generously. If it's God has given you leadership ability, take your responsibility seriously. And if you have the gift of showing kindness or showing mercy, tell that do it gladly. So God is all giving us every believer a gift in first corinthians 12 verse 7 says every a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other and and it's the Holy Spirit that gives these gifts he distributes these gifts as he will so we don't need to compare with each other your gift is as special as to any other person amen so not only has god given us the holy spirit to serve he's given us the holy spirit to suppress the enemy to, to suppress the devil because we shall we all have opposition in being of this temple you know the first opposition comes from our flesh we have inclinations to sin the urges to sin our flesh wants to overrule our lives you know there's procrastination there's laziness slothfulness but through the power of the Holy Spirit we can overcome that there's also the world there's the world as well wanting to you know to mold us you know to to to, to conform us into his mold 
And also, there are some good things that can become bad things in our life that 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 sap up our strength. Like when we we spend too much time on things that are not that do not have eternal significance, like maybe social media, Facebook, Instagram, or, or Hollywood, Nollywood, Bollywood, and and those are the things that Satan used to steal our time. So we have little strength, you know, uh, to to do the things of God. And we also have the devil who is also against us, seeking to solicit us, entice us to do evil. But the Bible says God has given us power. In Luke 10, it says, I've given you power to tread over scorpions and cobras and, and scorpions, you know, you know, to tread them under our feet, under our feet and, and it's given us power, you know, over all the power of the enemy. But the Bible says in order to be able to resist the devil, we need to submit to God. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourself to God. Humble yourself in the hands of God. Resist the devil and it will flee. The Bible gives us this command. As Christians, we need to learn to resist the devil. That is, resist him when he, he shoots his fiery darts of fear, of anxiety, of doubt, of lust, you know, or all kind of um, uh, feelings of worthlessness, depression. We need to rebuke him and say, Get thee behind me, Satan. We need to rebuke him from our homes when he comes. When we, although we can't see, but we can, we can hear his footsteps. When there's uh, um, mis when misunderstanding begins to erupt in the household, when the child becomes to become unruly, we know this, that those are the footsteps of the enemy. Or when there's trouble at work, you know, or when there's this un unruly child, you know, we begin to pray. We know that this is the devil. We resist him. You remember what the Bible says, the Bible says resist him, meaning the devil will not go easily. You need to resist him. Steadfast in the faith. Let's move on to the next point. And David and his people also gave generously to the Lord. In First Chronicles, that same chapter 20, 29, and this is what David said, that, And now because of my devotion to the temple of my God, I am giving all of my private treasures of gold and silver to help in the construction of the temple. You see, God has given us a lot. God so loved the world that he gave us. He gave his all for us. And we also have to emulate from the example of Christ. Our, our God is a giver and we need to give to the work of the Lord. We need to invest in the things of, the, uh, invest in the things of God. We need to examine ourselves. Are we building the kingdom of God? Are we building the kingdom of this world? We need to give generously. We need to give consistently. Whatever um, you know, you you know, you make up your mind to give. Some people give ten percent, and I just want to release some people. Just because you don't give ten percent does not mean you are caused by God, because Christ has redeemed us from the cost of the law. You know, this is the principle that God has given us in Second Chronicles. Sorry, um, Second Corinthians this time, chapter nine, seven to eight. He said, "You must each decide in your heart." How much to give? That is, if it is five percent you can give, then give faithfully and consistently. Don't try to keep as little as you can as you can give. You see, the principle of giving in the New Testament is: if you give sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you give bountifully, you reap bountifully. God will reward your work. Okay, let's get back to Second Corinthians nine. Uh, I read from verse 7. You must each decide in your heart how much you give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty of to share with others. We give to God because God is good, because He made us the breath. We, we, every breath we take, every step we take is from the Lord. He deserves our praise, He is worthy. Of praise because everything we have at Second Chronicles 29 for this it comes from Him. So the Bible wants to say because there are those who are neglecting the house of God in giving their time, giving their talents and their treasures. You see, this is what God said to His people. You know, uh, in in Agai chapter one, verse from verse two, He said, "The people are saying the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord." You see, but what God says, why are you living in your lux luxurious houses where well, my house lies in ruins? Today in the Western world, many churches are closing down. And guess what happens when these churches close down? They take over by businesses, by other, um, uh, other faiths. So we need to be faithful to attend our local church because the church is the basis of God's operation on earth. 
and we're all called to serve God in His temple. We're all going to give account of what we've done with the gifts He's given us, our money, you know, our time and our effort. Amen. So, the last part I want to talk about is this. That David and his people feasted before the Lord. And after our anniversary, we had the feast, we had the party. In 1 Chronicles 29, verse 22, it says, They feasted and drank in the Lord's presence with great joy that day. So what's the lesson? Uh, God is not a killjoy like some people think. Some people think, uh, oh, the devil makes them think that, oh, if you become a Christian, means all, all the fun is sucked away. You know, Christian life is boring and so forth. But that is ignorance. That is lack of adequate revelation of the word of God. Because even Jesus went to parties. In Luke 7, verse 34, we read, uh, The Son of Man, who is Jesus, on the other hand, feasts and drinks. And, and you say he's a gluten and a drunkard. And a friend of tax collectors and other sinners. In John chapter 2, verse 1, he was invited to a wedding party. In Luke 5, 29, Levi, Matthew, the tax collector, invited him to, to, uh, to a party in his house, to a banquet in his house. In Ecclesiastes chapter 2, 24, 25, so I decided there's nothing better than to enjoy food and drink, find satisfaction in work. Then I realized that these pleasures are from the hand of God. Well, yes, there are two different kinds of party. There's God's kind of party, and it's different from the devil's party. So what does the devil's party look like? In Romans 13, verse 10, it says, Because we belong to the day, we must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in darkness of wild parties. You see, you see the parties of the world is wild. It's full of drunkenness and drug abuse and sexual promiscuity, immoral living, fighting and jealousy and evil mother. So, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 4, that now that you're a believer, you don't need to partake in such things. In, of, he said, of course, in First Peter chapter 4, verse 4, of course, your former friends um, um, plunge into the flood of wild and destructive things, you know, uh, that they do. You see, these things, you know, that we, they call fun, it's destructive. You know, it's not true life. You know, what's, 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 what's there, you know, when you, know, you, you go to a spa, you get drunk, and then you don't know where you are, you, you, you vomit all about the place. That's not true life. The Bible says Jesus in John 10, 10, 10 came to give us life, and more abundantly. You see, we had the party, and we had fun. There was no hangover, but we were filled with the joy of the Lord. And the Bible says, remember, those people, they will have to face God, who will judge everyone, both the living and the dead. So... As a random, let's be committed to do the work of God. Let's I really get, read again what David passed on to his son. He said, and I'm pa passing on to you, you are listening to me today, to the church and to the, and to the Christian. My son, learn to know God of your ancestors. Intimately, we need to learn to know God. In, we need to have that private fellowship day by day. We have to have a disciplined fellowship to know God intimately. Worship and serve him with your whole heart and will you mind willing to serve God through the body of Christ through the church. For the Lord sees every heart and knows every plan and thought. If you seek him, you'll find him. If you forsake him, he will reject you forever. So take this seriously, the Lord says. The Lord has chosen you to build a temple as a sanctuary. Be strong and do the work. And then First Chronicles 28, verse 20 says, and David continued, and I'm saying this to you, to you that are listening to me today. Be strong and be courageous and do the work. Don't be afraid of the scroll. Yes, we may stumble in our faith, you know. And maybe you stop reading, you stop praying, or you stop going. And now it's the time for you to strengthen yourself. Roll up your sleeve. God is saying, I am with you. He said, he will not fail you, nor forsake you. God is the God of grace. You see, you're not a failure because you fail or because you stumble. You're a failure when you quit, when you stop trying, when you give up entirely. So I pray that God will relight the fire of passion for God in you today in Jesus' name. God says, I am with you. I will see to you that the work related to the temple is finished correctly. And he said in verse 21, The various division of priests and Levites will serve in the temple of God. Others with skills of every kind will volunteer. And the officials and the entire nation are to your command. That means, you see, the church is at our command. The church is for me and you to encourage and build up one another. So if you are listening to me today, because you are either the temple of God or the temple of Belial, the temple of devil. So if you are still, the, because it, there's no neutrality. So if you are the temple of, if not giving your life to God, that means you are the temple of Satan. So if God is speaking to you and convicting you, 
that you need to switch over today by giving your life to Christ. How? By admitting you're a sinner, by believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and then confessing Him as your Lord and Savior. If you, and if God is and, and, and speaking to you, why don't you pray this prayer with me? Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess I'm a sinner. I believe Jesus died on the cross and rose again from the dead. I receive Him into my life. I confess Him as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for making me your child today. In Jesus' name. If you said that prayer, welcome to the family of God. You said, I quench yourself with God's people that love Jesus, that live according to the word. I, I tell you can be, they can be encouraged and filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, and grow in your faith. So I leave you with this blessing. As men as you that are listening to me, I say, may God bless you and protect you. May God cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you in all your ways. I pray that the Lord will lift up his kindness upon you. He will smile at you, you know, with favor and give you peace. Not just in your spirit, but in your soul, in your mind. I rebuke every anxiety and fear, depression, worthlessness in the name of Jesus. I pray God will fill your body with peace. I pray that God will rebuke every pain, every foreign object, anything that is of the devil in Jesus' name. So God bless you and thank you for watching. See you next time. Watching Faith World TV. Faith World TV, changing the world with the Word of God.